But it's been six months since Riri, Baelish, and Tugnut have defeated the Mind Flare in the capital city. They were instructed by the the Wizard College to go out and find any sense of the All Flame, any of them in the Eastern Lands. And in these whole six months, you guys have found nothing. <laughs> it's been pretty boring. Absolute zit. I mean, you've done a few things in a couple villages here and there. You got your names out there. They know Tugnut, the, this barbarian, a strange wizard and a crazy thief who keeps plucking coins out of people's pockets and that ride with a goblin and a dog. But not much has really happened. And currently, you guys have recently entered the Kingdom of Seameth. Uh, it's on the eastern lands. It's an eastern peninsula. Let me pull up my flow chart here just so I can see. Empire of Seameth, I am sorry. It's on the eastern peninsula of the current continent you guys were already on. And the first town you've come across after you cross the border, about a day or two's journey. Very tiring, climbing over mountains, and now you've entered kind of a swampier area. And you've come across this town mid-evening, and the sign outside of it says Town of Kelma. And it is actually on a little bit of a lake. And you can see a familiar boat parked there as well that you've seen before in, in Newtown. The boat that took you guys onto the island where you found the first All Flame. As well as a little tiny tavern where there, you can hear some music coming out of and in to the side of it. And she's not to your side, honey. Just, just no pointing. Oh, These are right. always changing. <laughs> Oh my god. And you know, there's some armor there's some armor armor smiths and other like horse stables, but overall you can see the town and the, the ship dock kind of converging onto this small inn as well. So uh what do you three do? So there's a there's a dock in the what? Sorry. Into the town? There's a dock, there's an inn, there's a uh, some armor sp armor spots, people, blacksmiths, uh, there's some, you know, horse stables, but everyone's kind of converging onto this uh, little inn uh, tavern. Uh, I'm going to go into the inn. All right. So tug Yeah, I'm going to head to the inn. All right. And Riri? Um, I'm going to go into the horse stable. Okay. So... We're going to let you go to the horse stables and I'll take care of Baelish and Tugnut. Then we'll circle back to you, okay? So, okay. Tugnut, Bluke, his, his familiar of a, of a goblin, and Baelish walk in and you hear beautiful music playing in the background. of, And you can instantly see a human bard sitting there singing some kind of song, playing on a lute. And so, but in the center, something catches your eye. You guys see a red tiefling arm wrestling with an orc. And it is Tough Nut. You see her there, and she's boom, smashing it right against the the table there. And Tough Nut. Ah, that's my sister. Ah. <laughs> so you see her arm wrestling. She look, broke this dude's arm like nearly right in half. It, it seemed like, and the crowd goes. Ah! You see gold coins flying, ale being splashed everywhere. It's a good time. Uh, I go up to the orc, and uh, I just point and laugh. The orc's like, what are you laughing at, brother? This lady's tough! Ah, uh, this lady's my sister. She's sister? <laughs> she's of your tribe? And then he looks over at you, Tough Nut, and with this glaring, like, red look in his eye. And you can see blood's coming out of his mouth, because it looks like he bit his tongue when he was trying to arm wrestle you so hard. What do you say? Ooh, can I... I, I want to pick his pocket while he's distracted. Do a stealth <laughs> check. Or a sleight of hand check. Go ahead. First roll of the stream. What are we getting? Uh. Twelve. Twelve? Uh, you were able to pull out about six coin. The uh, gold? Gold coin. Yep, six gold coin. Yep, and that's all. What just happened there? <laughs> What was that? I don't know. He told me to go look at the stream, and then he went and did a thing. <laughs> I was just fixing something. All right, cool. Uh, all right, so yeah, you were playing for that. So, hey, hey, bro, how's it going? Hey, how are you doing? Do you want an arm wrestle? 
Nah, you know, I don't want to embarrass you. Are you sure? Okay. Uh, oh, I, can, I don't know. I, can be okay. I can't get any more embarrassed than me. <laughs> Are you going to take him up on that arm wrestle, Tough Nut? Uh, well, you know, it's your money, buddy. Let's go. Oh, okay. Not, Not like right. I don't have any. Uh, strength, uh, strength check? check? Yeah, both of you do a strength check against each other. It's Sorry. It's the it's the 20-sided. That's fine, I can tell. Right? Yeah, 20-sided. Yeah, 20-sided. Yeah, 20 20 uh, 20, 20, but it's not that. Okay. What, what'd you get? Did you say strength? Yep, strength. You got a 20, tough tug nut? Yep. Okay. I got... 22. Ooh! Ooh. With, <laughs> with much effort... It was tough, but Tough Nut was able to hit smack Tug Nut's hand right against the table there. Just BAM! Dang, someone's gotten stronger. <laughs> hey, I've been working out, buddy. Uh, where's, uh, that, where's, that, where's that gold again? <laughs> how much did you say? Oh, I don't think we did, but, uh, you know, I'll here's, take, uh, I'll, take fi I'll take 50. Okay, here. Alright, so it gives him 50. Baelish. As you see this encounter happen, it kind of warms your heart to see a nice friend that you haven't seen in almost eight months or so, six to eight months. Uh, but it is crowded. Are you going to try to do anything in this uh, tavern here? Can I see any like wealthy? Like, can I tell if anybody's you know well off in this tavern? Uh, do a perception check. Fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, you see a couple crowns guard in the back, one younger, one older, uh, with a man who looks a little well-to-do off. And this man is looking sad and, like, begging to these two crowns guard. You can't really tell what they're talking about, though, because of how loud everything else is. Uh, I'm gonna go and stand behind them to see if I can hear what they're talking about. Okay. As you overhear, you hear the younger crowns guard... But sir, just let me take a few detachment. Uh, uh, just me, Thorn, and prob probably Gandalf, and we can definitely go save him. And then you hear the older man, no, no, it's too much, no matter how much wealth he, he says we have. And then the man's like, I will pay anything! And he's like shaking the older guard. Uh, I get his attention. What, you know, what are you, what are you offering to pay for the, the wealthy man looks for he's like my son he's been missing for about four weeks now he said he was going off to an abandoned mine to possibly find any gold that was left over there to pay off some debt after I said I couldn't help him but he's been gone I, I want his debt wiped clean I will pay anything to these guards and the older guard stands up and goes look he's wanted he has a bounty he needs to pay off but Going to those mines down south is too dangerous. Come! And he screams at the younger guard. The younger guard goes, yes, sir. He stands up. He's much shoulder, shorter than this older guard. And they both trudge out. The old man is just sitting there, looking at you in the eyes, hoping, hoping that you just offer something. Which would you would you offer to have someone go into these mines for you? And he's like looking, he's rubbing his hands. A month's wage. And your wage is? <laughs> and he kind of like backs up and sits down a little. He's like, looks you up and down and he's like, your armor's peculiar. How much did that cost you? And that's, you know, you know, it just depends on how much uh, uh, saving your son is worth. His bounty is 5,000 gold, so 6,000. 10. Do a persuasion check. <laughs> What'd you get? What'd you get? Five. Five yeah. <laughs> he kind of laughs at you. Look <laughs> Listen. <laughs> He's just sitting there giggling. And you're like wondering, like, kind of like, why he's giggling that hard? And he's he goes, this is the empire of Seamith. That is a year's wage I offered you after seeing your 
obvious style and grace, but I can't pay more, otherwise you might be robbed along the road. I'm gonna walk up behind Baelish okay. and uh, and uh, ask what's going on. He turns. Uh, I- I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm gonna ask him if he's uh, if he's bothering Baelish. I'm I'm following her too. I was like, I, I, but instead, I put my hand on Baelish and like, oh, uh, hang on. He like looks up and sees this, you know, six and a, like nearly eight foot tall orc, the six foot tall like elf, and like you know a much taller tiefling that he can't really eye, but looks like the devil all surround him, and he's just like, listen, whatever, whatever your request, I'll I'll, I'll honor. Just please. Help my son. So, what Baelish, what, uh, Baelish, what, uh, what was it that you initially offered or asked for? Gold. How many? Sorry, ten thousand. Uh, so now we need twenty. Do a uh, intimidation check on him. Intimidation. Yeah. Which one's intimidation? Sorry. Dead. Almost halfway down. Uh, so, 12, 13, 14. <laughs> 14. Okay. He goes, I will have to sell a few horses. It may be delayed, but it's a deal. Anything for my son? And he kind of goes, do you, so. <laughs> do you have a map of the area? Do you have it? Well... Um, yes. And he pulls up a, uh, a, l- a little map here. I'll post it in the D&D chat for you guys. If you guys want to see it. Let me just go find it here. ba 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 d d stream. He posts this, uh, this map. There's no markings on it or anything like that. But it should load through in just a second. And he's like... Uh- did you just take another job, Bailey? I think this one will be worth it, Tugnut. He goes, listen, it's it's in the town of Turncart to the mines north of that town. I, no one has been in there since, well, if you're locals, you know. But that's where he last said he was going to go. You can find me at the uh, Seamoth Capital. I will bid you farewell. And he kind of turns and just walks away kind of sullen you kind of see that you've defeated this man with your request now I'm going to shift over to to Riri yeah (laughs) so Riri you and you and Cerberus your cute little dog are uh, Cerby Cerby are kind of just walking walking around next to these horses they're much larger than you by about like you know a meter or so and they all are kind of scoffing at you and Cerberus. Cerberus is kind of trotting next to you, all kind of happy, feeling recently fed. He's, there's just like eight or nine horses in here. So I'm looking for a horse that would suit uh, um, pointy. Okay. Do a perception check. Uh, not 20 plus 2. You find this beautiful black horse with a white mane and a odd blue gem in the center of his, his face, right between his eyes. Uh, I'm going to motion to the stable hand. There's uh, no stable hand. How much for this one? There's no one in there's here. There's none? Yeah, there's no one in here. There's no one in here? <laughs> there's no one in here other than you, the horses, and Cerberus. Is there anything keeping this horse where it's at? Uh, a locked stable door. It's head kind of peeking over it. It's just locked? Yeah, it's just locked. <laughs> Wait, do I still have the ability to do that um, you need an object? thing where I make the key? Uh, no, I don't think you do. Ah! <laughs> I do not think you do. It but remember, uh, hey, remember I gave you that with the lock picks in it, the you the do. the adventurer's kit. You do have a lock That's pick. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you can attempt to do a um Oh, oh wait, 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 wait. Uh Can't I use prestidigitation to get to unlock this? 
Uh, what were the abilities on that? Not I sure, like that was but I will say it is a survival check that you will have to do for this lock. Okay, I'm gonna do it. Okay. Uh, 18. 18? Alright. Uh, uh, survival. That's a wisdom. It's all the way down the bottom. 22. 22. 22. You're able to pick the lock quickly and jimmy it open, and the gate swings open. The heart horse trots out. It's much larger than what you realize, and the eyes are like a deep purple that kind of matches the, the gem slightly, and a weird galaxy-like glow coming out of them. Cool. Alright, we're gonna go. We're, I'm gonna just kind of take the reins. And... Okay. It doesn't move when you try to pull it. It's like not moving. You can try an animal handling check on it. I guess I'll do that. Okay. Mm. My animal handling is zero. Nine. <laughs> Nine? I doesn't want to move with you. <laughs> I was open. I opened the lock. Yeah, you open the lock. <laughs> but I can't do anything. And as you mm. as you're trying to pull on this horse, you you hear behind you, "Hey there, bunny. What are you doing?" Oh, I wanted to make sure nobody bought this horse while I was trying to find a stable hand. So I figured I'd take it with me. As you, as you turn around, you see a man uh, with dark, dark skin, white dreadlocks, a white beard, like silver eyes, and like this pink and blue coat, like that nearly reaches the bottom of his shoes that are very silver. And on his shoulder, you can't tell because it's kind of dark, but there looks to be some kind of bat-like creature with bright red eyes. And he, this gleaming smile comes across his face. And he's like, What is with your strange outfit, little one? As he strokes his beard. Oh, I'm a wizard. Obviously. Hmm. And he walks right up to you. You're about like a quarter of his height. And then he bends down and just like looks you right in the eye. And he's like, Tell me, who taught you how to handle animals? Most people consider me an animal, so they wouldn't really he, consider it necessary to teach me that skill. He rubs one of your giant ears and goes, No, no, you're a person. Don't let anyone say otherwise. And he stands up, pats you on your head. He's like, Now, this horse wasn't going to be sold because, well, she's mine. And he walks her back in, locks the door, like, with ease, and turns back around to you. Mm puts his hands in his pocket and the little bat-like creature comes and lands on Cerberus's head and it looks like a lemur with bat wings now that you can kind of see it in, in some light as it moves around and he's like Charlotte get off that dog and it squeaks and jumps back onto his little shoulder and he's like so I'll ask you one more time as he like Ooh. makes a, a vine grow out of what? his shirt into like a sword he's like who taught you how to handle animals? And it points you right on the nose. I guess I don't really understand what you're asking. The vine goes back into his, his coat and he's like, Well, I guess you're there's another bunny wizard I'm looking for. And he just strolls on out. Now, you got you other three are back in the tavern having a good time. Are you, what are you guys doing now? Drinking. Drinking? Nice. Heavily. Heavily. Sweet. I am gonna go and look at it for blacksmith. So, are you gonna look in the tavern or outside of the tavern? Uh, outside the tavern. Okay. As you... I'm, actu I'm actually gonna go with my brother. <laughs> okay. And Baelish, what are you doing? I'm going to head and look for a... Uh... I guess uh, 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 I want to see if anybody knows anything about my armor. Okay. Alright, so you see Tugnut and Toughnut kind of walk out. You you look over and you, you do see 
a couple of academic looking fellows in the back as well and, and then an old adventurer looking dwarf who's sitting at the at the bar um, eat any of these you wish to speak with these are the ones who are catching your eye the, ad- the, ad- the adventurer dwarf okay you, you walk up to the dwarf and you can hear him just going oh since the war these orcs have done nothing but to as he drinks his ale down uh, come up and kind of, you know, uh, uh. Are you going to try to seduce the dwarf? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, can, I, I want to, I want to buy an ale and kind of okay. like swish it to him. Okay. Uh, uh, and basically try to finagle and, and charm my way into seeing if he knows anything about, you know, possibly hearing where other pieces of my armor are. <laughs> okay. So it, it costs you five gold for the ale. Uh, you put the five gold down and do a, um, let's see here. I gotta keep this in front of me. <laughs> One second. Here. Don't drink too much ale or his response might be something about your arm or being on the floor bedroom. Alright, do a, uh, a persuasion check on him and what are you saying as you do it? Um, he's a dwarf, right? Yeah, he's a dwarf. Uh, uh, such a adventurer as yourself must have heard tales of the... Oh, shit. What was the name of my armor? Uh, I, I forgot. <laughs> uh, armor of the Great Adventure. Yeah, no, it's like great, ad- great Adventure's uh, 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 armor and, and maybe, you know... Uh, an amazing adventurer like yourself might know where I could find other pieces of it. And what'd you roll for rear persuasion? Twelve. <laughs> he looks at you and goes, Ah, my fine lass, yes! You are looking... You have a warrior's armor on there, and boy, does it fit well. <laughs> and, he, and he laughs, and he's like, Ah, but it's nothing! It's nothing like the armor of invocation from Tales of Yore! And may I tell you... And he goes on for about two hours about an armor. While he's doing that, I'm going to switch over to some other people here. While he starts talking about different (laughs) armors that he's seen, different stories woven. He's a blacksmith, so he's going to talk about these kind of things for a long time. Tugnut and Toughnut walk out of the uh, bar, and they see this man... Dressed in silver and pink, dark features, white hair, and this black creature on his uh, on his shoulder. And he goes, "Well, hello!" And he turns and starts walking towards Tugnut. And he go looks up Tugnut up and down. And he goes, "That's an interesting armor you got there, sir. Where'd you get that?" Oh, uh, I got it from a friend. Hmm. And he like. He grabs the you armor, are. he's touching it, looking at it. He pats you on the sides. Interesting. Did he give you a weapon as well? Oh, yeah, here. I pull out Drake's sword. He's like, oh. Make sure you lick it so that he won't keep it. <laughs> you gotta make sure you clean it. He's like, might I uh, hold that sword? Sure. He holds it, picks it up, sw- gives it a few swings. Which is very unusual to you because you're one of like uh. ten people who can do that. <laughs> He's like, Drake's sword. This is very nice. Hands it right back to you. He's like, How long have you been in this country? Oh, I'm bad with time, so it's been not about long like, enough, I guess. It's been about three days, roughly, that you've that you've been here. Uh, I'm bad with time, so I don't know how long it's been. But I got a question now that uh, I've I've never seen anyone use that sword except for the person who gave it to me. So, uh, Mm -hmm. do you think you can improve the sword? And he looks you up and down and is like, hmm, I'm not sure. I'm not a blacksmith or an enchanter, but let me see if I can do a little of something. And he takes the sword out of your hands, puts it on the ground, pulls out a flower, a blue flower from his jacket, 
crumples it up, rubs it across your sword, and whispers a word, Hushing! And like, you see like this electricity just like kind of sparkle about your sword. He's, Here you go. And he hands it back to you. Mm. Once a day. Thank you, you for. Once a day, if you concentrate now, Tugnut, you could cause a, a extra d4 of lightning damage on one attack. Who knows how long this enchantment will last, though. Oh, thank you for sneezing on my sword. It means a lot. <laughs> and he just laughs at you. He's like, Tugnut, listen. I'm always here for a friend of Drake's. And he pats you on your shoulder. He's like... Wait, you knew Drake? Oh, yes. Yes. A, a good... My, my teacher was a good friend of his. I just haven't heard from him for a while, except for to come here and look for, for you. And he just stands there. He's like, but I found you. Now I have no idea what the hell to do. <laughs> oh, you should uh, you should come with us so you can sneeze on the sword more. Sneeze on the sword more. And he just like puts his hand on his face. He's like, I don't think I'll be doing too much of that. That was a little much work. Now, do you by chance have a bunny? Uh, uh no, I know what you're talking about. Follow me. And I go look for... Uh, I go off so I can start looking for Riri. Okay, and Tough Nut, what do you do? Um, I am actually, I'd like to go look for some more weapon. Okay, as you look across the town, just know it is getting late at night. Nothing is open in this town. Okay. Yeah. Uh... And then Riri, we're coming back to you. You're just enamored with this horse, and Cerberus is just kind of like letting his tail flop back and forth. What do you do? Is there, is there still no? There's no one attending the stable. No, nope. no one. No one's at at this stable at this hour. This is infuriating. It's par for the course no, for these pa- past six months, and you got into this town late in like late afternoon, early evening. So it's been like, you know, people are kind of done for the day, and it's getting dark as well. Like, pretty dark. What do the other horses look like that are in this stable? Uh, average. Like, not not special. Just that one that that one guy, like, led back into the stable looks very different. With the white mane, the eyes, the gin, all of that. Hmm. Maybe I'll just talk to Okay. So... Yeah, I think I'll do that. Okay. Um... So I get to cast tongues on the horse. Tongues? Oh, right, you can talk to an- you can yeah. talk to creatures like that. I can talk to anything. I forgot you have that ability uh, now. Yeah, go, go ahead. Go right ahead. You cast tongues. Yeah. Uh, that is a... That's not really even a... It's a wisdom check, I Nat think? Nat 20. Nat 20, okay. You open up discussions with the horse. What do you want to ask it? Was that really your, um... Companion earlier? That led you back into the... The horse looks, he's not only my companion, he's my master. Are you happy with serving him? I do not feel anything plus or minus. And it's like this odd, like, calming voice coming over. It's not normal. It doesn't seem natural, this voice. E- even using tongues to talk to this creature, it's like, this is this is something different. It's like it's allowing you to talk to it. Hmm. I have a friend who uh, really, really loves her. And I'm, I've been trying to find her the companion. Well, she would make an excellent map. I'm sure she would, but I am bonded to Jax. Is there any way that that bond could be? If I was, if I was to die, the bond would be broken. That's the only way. It's the how he created me. And like you see, like the gl- the gleam from the, as he says that the horse, the, the the gem on the horse's forehead gleams this this bluish purplish glow, 
and receives back. And it kind of snorts. What else can you tell me about Jack? Not much. You should talk to him. He likes you. I'm not sure about that. He drew do a you, sword. Do you have any oats? Do I have? And it starts stamping his foot. I would love some oats right now. Jack's always Are has there any oats. oats. Uh, I. Do you like bread? No, I like. Or how oats. about an apple? Nay. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna look around the table for some oats. All right. Uh, do an investigation check of some kind. Investigation is an intelligence check. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I took some hits when we uh, switch these characters out. Yeah. So that's 11? 11? You don't find really anything other than like some rotting carrots. There weren't any oats in the no. stable. Nope. <sighs> You're starting to realize kind of like where you are. It's not a normal kind of poor. I'm sorry, I can't seem to find anything. It's like, no worries, Jax will bring me some oats. And he kind of turns around in the stable. You thought it was too big to do that, but it like turns his back into box to the back of its little spot and then sits. And you hear a little <laughs> coming from the horse. <laughs> what? What does Jax do? What's his job? Well, uh, he's Baron's personal assistant, so anything he wants him to. Since when? Oh, 600 years back. And then he kind of goes, I'm tired. And falls asleep. Hmm. As, I'm going to see if I can go find Jack. As you walk out, you see Tugnut just marching along in an aimless direction with Jax behind him. And, and Toughnut's kind of just They happen like, to be headed this way? They're not headed this way. They're just walking around town Where aimlessly. <laughs> Where are you, buddy? <laughs> and Jax goes, Serby, bark at him. Serby goes, BORK! Oh, why is there a dog barking in here? BORK! <laughs> you, you hear Cerberus. Hold on. Talk, talk about doing an intelligence check real quick. <laughs> it's never good when Tugnut does intelligence checks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that nine. One, he said nine? A you, recognize, you recognize Cerberus's bark. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. Uh, it's that dog. Got it. Yeah, got it. <laughs> Alright, follow, follow me. You weird guy, let's go. Sneeze man. <laughs> so you right. you walk over the stable. Uh and it's it's Tough Nut Jax and, and Tug Nut uh, right there and as you walked out with with Cerberus and you're just like looking and you, you kinda see Jax just smile at you again. He's like, Hello bunny. Yes. Oh, I haven't yet introduced myself to you yet. He bends down. And says, I'm Jax, and he holds out his hand right to you. I take it. You take it, and it's it feels as firmly as I can, considering my do hand a, is tiny. Do, do a strength check if you're going to try to do that. Because <laughs> you're I'm tiny. Not, I'm not trying to intimidate him. I'm just trying to give a yeah. firm handshake. Yeah, no problem. Do a strength check on this one. Your hand is tiny, AF. It's so small. Fourteen. Fourteen. He's like, ah, that's why. And he like, you can feel the power coming off of his hand as he like twists and looks at your little paw and pets it a little. He's like, you do well to keep your paws nice and clean. And you're also feeling a lot of electricity, but also a lot of life coming from his hand as well. I lo I'm looking at my hands. Like, <laughs> no, there. He's like, no, 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 bunny. 
I respect that. Not a lot of rodent folk who become wizards keep their hands as clean as yours. And like, this guy's weird. This guy, and he's like, <laughs> Tugna, you're wearing a dead man armor. You're weird. <laughs> so? No, you guys don't wear dead people's armors? That's You guys don't reuse? No, uh, I only buy the freshest of fresh. Recycle. And he and he like he like straightens out his coat and his little little creature like jumps to the side. It's like Charlene, a new name. It's all right. And he just pets it and makes like a little chirp noise. He's like, "Now, isn't there an elf supposed to be with you?" How do you I know that? He's here somewhere. Okay. Uh, oh, no worries. I was just asked to find. It. Who are you? And he points at you, Tough Nut. He's like, "Who? I I don't know you." He's just like looking you up and down, but you can't really tell because his eyes are blue and glassy, like, and like. But also, you do passively, Tough Nut, notice that as he looks you up and down, his little creature looks you up and down as well. <laughs> um, that's for me to know and you to find out. He's like, "Oh, you're not so tough," and he wiggles one of your horns. <laughs> um, hands off the horns, buddy. <laughs> Fine. Someone's got a crush. <laughs> I don't know. I thought he was uh, making eyes at old Bunny here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Bunny's already. I very taken. much doubt it. <laughs> it's like, no. Your doubts may be subverted, Bunny. And he just like he like pats you on the head, and like the electricity coming off of it kind of makes your fur poof out a little bit. With static shock, like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sneeze, man. I brought you to the bunny, so. Uh, well, let's I'm go get good. some. Let's go get some ale. We all need to talk. All right, Eddie. I understand that you're. Uh, yes, for almost seven hundred years. It's like, interesting that I've never met you. Oh, he sends me on errands every once in a while. Come. Let me get you some carrot juice. And he starts walking back to the tavern. Now, Baelish, you've been sitting in this tavern for a while. And this old man's just like, And that's when she left me! Ugh! I just kind of start to sneak away. I, I'm just like, nope. Do a stealth check. And that's when she left him. <laughs> 18. 18. As you start to walk away, he grabs your arm. He's like, but then that's when I met Timothy. That man knew how to love like no man ever loved before. And the ale is like coming off of his breath. And he hits his head on the table and passes out and falls on the ground. And then, Is like, there anybody around? Four other dwarves come out of like nowhere and they like, pick him up and take him to like a, a table. <laughs> Quickly. And you're just like... Ah. And the bartender, just like human, is like... Yeah, he uh... Should have stopped him. I'm sorry. But you only paid five coin for that ale. He kind of like walks away giggling to himself. I, I go back to the to the tavern that we were in first. Yeah, you were, you're still in there. You were talking to him that whole time. Yeah, oh, <laughs> I thought I, no, I, you thought were, I had left him. No, you were there that whole time. <laughs> it's like, god damn. <laughs> yeah, that, that guy talked to your... But you did learn several valuable pieces of information. Um, you learned that this land used to be, uh, owned by dwarves, was taken over for, by orcs in the Thousand Year War, and that some kind of poison is running through the swamp, and that's what's driving a lot of people away. So those are the three things you learned from this long, arduous conversation. Also, uh, <laughs> Brian, I love your little guy you have. <laughs> on my screen. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> it's adorable. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's great. <laughs> it's cute. Uh, anyway, so as you kind of like wipe off the drool and slobber from this dwarf, you turn and you see uh, this man in a silver and pinkish coat, uh, followed by Tugnut, uh, Bluke, Toughnut. Riri and Cerberus all walk in. And you do notice Riri's angry, poofed out 
look. <laughs> I'm not angry. Well, she you she looks a little annoyed. Angry. Annoyed because of the poof. That's how you look. <laughs> annoyed, but I'm not angry. Okay. And like you see, you see this man like kind of oh. snap his fingers, and like his little creature goes and clears the table. Everyone kind of like moves out of the way, like without even think. They were like in the middle of the conversation. They all leave a table as he pulls up a chair, and then oh, that's up, nice. And summons like six other chairs to the table they just kind of like like zoom in with like a motion of his hand he looks over at you he's like wow elf come here i head over there all right and you all sit down and it's like so why did baron want me to find you he this is the first time he hasn't told me anything we all look at riri <laughs> Yeah, yeah, bunny. <laughs> it's, it's probably because you want us to have some assistance finding the, um, the all flame. The all flame, and he kind of like scratches his head. He's like, "God, that stupid thing." And you see a frown come over his face. He's like, "I do know of one place that may or may not be able to help you. It's about three weeks' journey from here." It's in the capital of the empire. What's left of it? There's a archeo- uh, a point of the archaeological guild there. They can probably help you find out what you're looking for. I I'm not. I wasn't around when he lit them, so I'm not. I'm not too sure. When who lit them? And he smiles. He's like, you know what? If he hasn't told you, and he grabs your little paw, it's not my place. And he just, like, rubs it gently. Like, well, leans, hold on. Leans back in his chair. Why doesn't he just relight them? I don't know. I thought you guys would have asked. I'm oh, confused, Bunny. No one on the council knew how to relight the all flames. Uh, and that when they tried, they were unsuccessful with the one we found. And he looks at you, he's, he has this look of, like, concern and confusion. And he's like, well, my pay doesn't allow me to know council matters. And he kind of just sinks back into his chair slightly. Barkeep, one ale for everybody here. He, as he snaps his fingers, you can see, like, 25 gold appear on the on the bar. And the barkeep's like, Jesus, Jack's fine. And he, like, takes, takes up his ale, comes over and slaps it down. He's like... You're gonna scare away what little customs I have, you freak. He runs back. Jack's just like, ah, it's okay. And he holds out his hand, and the little creature jumps off and grabs the ale and puts it into his hand. He's like, okay, thank you. He takes a big drink. I just What's don't... What's this one's name? Oh, this is Stella. May I see you? Oh, sure. And he holds out his hand. She jumps up into it. And he hands you over. It's about the size of the, that blue dragon you saw a few months back. And it just has these red eyes, black fur, these black wings, and it's just kind of curiously looking at you. What do you do with it? I'm just holding her and betting. He's like, scratch behind the ears. She likes that. And it kind of coos in your hand. <laughs> That's a white creature. You can't just grab that. <laughs> what do you want? I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, yeah. Anyway, so what are you guys doing? Uh, Baelish, Tough Nut, Tug Nut. Are you saying about uh, the one true warrior's armor in this land? He's like, I heard there was a shield, but not on this continent. Hmm. And he looks uh. you over and he... He goes, wait a minute. He touches your armor on the forehead. It turns back into a man's armor. He's like, oh my god. <laughs> and he's like, you're wearing, oh, you're wearing it. And he I love too, because it's a meme armor. <laughs> it is a meme armor. And he touches it, it goes back to fitting you perfectly. And he's like, where the heck did you find those? I have a knack for, uh... Finding uh, clothing items. He's like, do you, have, do you have the bow? 
The what? The bow! Do you have the bow? And he's like really excited. I I kind of take my bow and I'm like... I don't need an arrow. Yeah. Let me see it. And he holds out his hand. He's not looking directly at you when he takes it. And he holds it and he's like... Hello, old friend. How are you doing? And you just see him like sitting there and he goes... <laughs> really? She does? Well, let's see if I still got it. And he flicks it. Like, just like a quick flick. And you see somebody holding a cup and it like splashes out into their hand. They're like... Aah! And he's like... All right. Hands it back to you. It's found a good home. It's been... So long. <laughs> He's like, I, o I only got a chance to make one piece of that fool's armor, and it was the bow, and he didn't like that I made it funny. Whoa, you, you can make armor? I thought you said you can't. I can't make armor, but I can uh, try to enchant it. I had a friend make it as a whole, but... Uh, and he's kind of like waving his hands around. He's like, "It was a different time." Can you can you try to enchant my chest? I gave you a sword, good sir. <laughs> no, you sneezed on my sword. He's like, uh, "What's that red one?" What about uh, my scimitars? What Your can you do with these? Well, let me see. And he holds out his hands. And you put them in there, and he looks them over. And he's like, "Ugh." These are crude. He kind of swings them around. And he's like, he smells I, I, them. I could, I could try enchanting them for you. He he smells them. He's like, how much blood have you gotten on these? And how much? A fair of, bit. But how much of your own? And he puts them back. Yeah, a fair bit. <laughs> a fair bit. And he puts them back in your hand. He's like, I don't want to even know what the hell you are, lady. <laughs> Fair just enough. saying, blood likes to come out of her more than once a month. Oh, <laughs> God. just saying. Thanks, bro. <laughs> Thanks, bro. That's gross. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Mm -hmm. Nice, so, nice. So, you, so you don't know where the gloves may be? No, no. We each took different parts of it. Me and my my younger sister. Who used to be a good armor smith before she passed? Made the bow. Oh, Drake made the helmets. Lee made the, made the the chess piece, and so on and so forth. All of us who trained under Baron made a different piece of this armor. Yeah, uh, I know someone who makes pretty good armor. She's pretty strong too. And he looks at you. He's like, if you find a good woman like that, you better be able to marry them. Oh, about that. Uh -huh. Oh? <laughs> He's already got that set up for when he gets back. Gets back. Oh, okay, nice. Apparently I got some armor coming back, too. We use pure platinum on it, because I have a lot of platinum, I guess. A lot of platinum? Do you want to wager that on a game? Oh. Mm, what game? And he rolls in, he's like, well, you pick. Is there an orcish game of chance you want? No. No? Not intelligent. <laughs> Where do I get? <laughs> oh, you'll, you'll get this. And he pulls out a flower that's, like, blue. And he's like, you can have this flower. And, like, you guys don't even know where he pulled that. It just, like, came out of nowhere. And it's, like, st sitting on his finger. But you already sneezed on this the sword with the flower. And it looks like it might wash off. <laughs> he's like, Tugnut, you're not the smartest, are you? I'm brilliant from what I'm told. Alright. You don't mess with my brother. He spins the flower and puts it back in his hand. He's like, well, uh, I'm going to go call a friend of mine, but you guys might want to go. You don't want to play a game? I'll give you, I'll give you Rome's we'll wager. wager two platinum for the flower. Okay. You choose the game. Alright. How about a game of ARG? <laughs> I'm okay with it. Alright, roll your dice. <laughs> What'd you get? Critical one. <laughs> oh, he got a seven. And so he's like, oh, oh, guess what you get to say as he hands you an ale? Arg. <laughs> and he just kind of drinks. And drinks. And Arg. He's like, before you sip, do you mind having this? And he pulls out a shot glass. 
You guys don't know where he's pulling these things out of, by the way. Uh, I I need to go grab a shot glass. One second. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> All right. Well, I have a shot glass. Yeah, what about it? He's like, here, just drink this, and our bet is uh, it's full. And you can also have the flour. And he puts the flour inside the shot glass and fills it up with a brownish liquid. Okay. Yeah. You gonna you gonna go? Drinking questionable substances. You roll a constitution <laughs> check. For you. Twelve. Twelve. I think it's Uh, temporarily until your next rest, your intelligence is a twenty. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> My God! What was again. that drink? And he's like, ah, it's just a drink to bring you some clarity, sir. Brother, mm. are I you remember okay? so much. Yes, brother, I'm quite, I'm quite fine. <laughs> Who are you? Why are you calling me brother? I, if I am correct, I am an orc, and you are nothing but a tiefling. You hear Tugnik, or you hear Blue go, What the hell? He's just oh, under the table. My great companion, I do remember how great you are. He's like, High five! Tugnik, where are you? He's like shaking you. I'm right here, buddy. Ah! This drink has really picked me up. And you, you see Jax just kind of turn back to Baelish and Riri. He's like, so, what are you guys' plans over the next few weeks? Well, uh, oh, well, I think that we should go ahead and go straight to the All Flame. And, but we must make sure that we are quite well prepared to go on this three-week journey. You said it was three-week journeys, right? Yes. I, did, I didn't ask you, Tugnut. Oh, but they seem to make very poor choices as of late. So therefore, I felt I should have my own articulation. I guess you could say. Clear. It's been about six months of you have choices. Yeah, six months of beautiful and, and, we haven't, and we haven't found anything in six months, have we? <laughs> exactly. No, you haven't. That's why I'm asking the smart ones. And he points at Baelish and points at Riri. He's like, you two. You guys have well, a job to do, don't you? Yes. Yes. All right. I will head to the capital and make preparations for your guys' arrival with the Archaeological Guild. You guys go ahead and just make sure a man is reunited with his son. And he stands up and, like, the black creature jumps back in onto his shoulder from Riri's arms. And he's like, all right, <coughs> take me home. And uh, who's who you roll? Oh, all right. Quick, Fury's Bunny said roll. Everyone roll a d20. I got a 5, Furious. 15. 15. 4. 12. 18. 18. Okay, so the only person that loses here is Baelish. She has to drink, but not really, because she can't. Because she's pregnant. She's pregnant. So that's technically 1, 2, 3, 4 shots you got to have, Fury's Bunny. Congratulations. Because <laughs> you said the party. <laughs> I would join you, but I'm out of the liqueur. I'm so sorry. Just, just take it's a sip okay. of your beer. Take a sip of your beer. Oh yeah. Oh, oh. There's, there's more alcohol downstairs, you weirdo. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to steal your stuff. <laughs> well, it's not stealing if you ask first. Yeah, true. But besides, I you're, besides, you're my brother. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Jack stands up. I'm all jacked up on Matten. Yeah. <laughs> Ew! Lit. Yeah. So, Jack stands up and he's like, you guys better be fast. And he just kind of flows his way out the door, closes the door. If you guys want to see what Jack looks like, I posted a picture of him in the Discord. In the d and I saw that. Yeah, pretty fine, right? <laughs> I can't quite get a get a feel for what the, his little thing looks like, though. It just looks like a little black shape. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, honey? <laughs> I'm not making dirty jokes. You're making all of the dirty jokes, and that's okay. All right. So, now, Tugnet, with your newfound intelligence, you can see the world clearly. You see that it's odd that you have a, a goblin as a pet. You see it's strange that you call a tiefling your sister. And it's odd that you've 
accepts that you've kind of run out on a wife that you didn't realize you were about to be married to, and for some reason your best friends are a bunny, an elf, and a red tiefling that you only see once every few months. Yes, quite. She says it like it's a bad... No, no, it's fine. Like, what do you do with all this newfound information, as well as the fact that you've killed thousands? Everyone, I must do something really fast. And I, uh, I run to the counter and I go to ask the tavern, by any chance, is there any place or anywhere that can give me a spell to allow me to be quite awake for some time? And he looks at you and he's like, yeah, but you'll die. What do you mean I will die? Well, it, it will jack you up more than well, you as he looks you up and down but I do got this puts a bottle it's like red like the the glass is red with like a brownish liquid inside he's like we give these to some miners so that they can work longer hours but they always end up needing the infirmary afterwards hmm but those are dwarves aren't they not always uh, sometimes they're humans once in a while an orc miners like are miners so, uh, that'll be, that'll be 50 gold. And he's kind of, like, giving you a side eye. Wait, wait, wait. If you're... <laughs> while he's talking, I... Cause I <laughs> while he's talking, I slip up behind him and conk a sleeping potion on him. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh... You roll a d8, uh, and then... Tugnut, you roll a constitution check. Wait, D8, D8, let me find it. That's not okay. <laughs> 19. 19. Zero. Zero. A, a D8? Gets you a zero? Wait, that's How this that guy, get... right? No, that's a D10 oh, wait. woman. Wait, wait, oh, yeah, no, this one, right? Wait, no, wait. Yeah, that one, yeah. roll the D8, that what one. was that? Okay. Eight. Eight? So, 19 minus 8, 11, hold on one second. Tugnut gets knocked out, hits the ground, shatters the wood um, with his giant armor. Why don't... Hmm. Okay, it's too late. No, so how, how, that, how I calculated that was her sleeping potion minusing away from your, your constitution check, because it was kind of weird. To see how quick. But she know. bumped me from behind. She didn't say she bumped me on the head, and so my ar She has to go through my armor, doesn't? It? Not for this type of thing. No, this Fuck. is not an attack. This is just her just coming up, psh, blasting at you. And these sleeping potions again are strong, so strong the barkeep fell asleep, and three of the patrons, and also Baelish, you do a Constitution check. Uh oh! Oh, it's you worth it. Knock yourself out. <laughs> uh. 16. Okay, you knock out two as you laugh. You're like, <laughs> uh, I walk over to Baelish and I'm going to use prestidigitation to make an instantaneous odd odor. Okay. Uh, that wakes Baelish right back up. <laughs> what about. <laughs> she did it di directed towards <laughs> Baelish. It's a, it's a ability that she can direct. So, Baelish wakes instantly back up with a major headache, so you, next roll's at disadvantage. Um, Tugna is still knocked out, just kind of, I can't believe he, t yeah, anyway. Tugna is knocked out. Uh, I, I hope, and this is, I'm speaking out of character, but I hope that they know that this really, like, took away from a lot I was going to help out with the party, so. <laughs> I was going to do some really cool shit, but. I, I figured. <laughs> <laughs> Do some really cool <laughs> shit. I kind of, I kind of turn around. I'm like, I don't think we could have handled smart Tugnut. <laughs> that's, that's fair. Well, yeah, this is uh, what Super Hulk. That's what it is. World yeah. Breaker Hulk at that. <laughs> yeah, it would have been World Breaker Hulk, pretty much. That's that is true. Tugnut with an intelligence of twenty is dangerous. <laughs> so what do you guys do now? Like, well, I don't got He's moving. <laughs> Well, where's, uh, where's his friend? Where's... Blue? Blue is just sitting Blue. at the table, just going like, eh. 
He didn't get knocked out? No. No, he didn't. He oh, wasn't, okay. Yeah, he was How many... Are, is there anyone standing around the register? Uh, there was. He's now knocked out. There's a couple of bar tent... Like, people who are, like, just drinking on the bar, but they're not really paying attention because they're farther yeah. down. They thought everyone just passed out from some strong alcohol. Can I try to swipe the register? Uh, do a slide fan check. The whole register, or are you gonna, like, clear, just clear it out? Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Uh, you find about six hundred gold in the register, but also a tingling coming from a pouch on your side. No. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh oh. It is time. Where's my notebook so I can write this down too? All right. So the tingling is coming out from your pouch. Same with you, Tough Nut. You have a slight tingling coming from that little pouch of coins on your side. It hasn't happened in about six months for either of you. <laughs> but what are you guys... I actually forgot I had it. What? 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 Yeah, that's that little tiny what? thing. So let me actually pull up a notepad here. What's, uh, what's going on with this, uh, Baelish? You getting that too? So are you guys going to pull out a... You guys have that? I go ahead and flip it. You're flipping the coin? Alright. Uh... It rolls heads. So that's okay. So I flip it. Okay, well you flip get... Flip a coin. And you get... It also comes up heads. The tingling stops. Everything seems fine. <laughs> so you can put the coins... You guys. Back in your pockets. <laughs> now remind me, how many of these... So I'm looking on my... You, you had a... You might need to look at your old character sheet, but remember, if you roll tails, uh, you get plus one corruption, and the coin disappears. But if you roll heads, you guys still haven't figured that one out yet. <laughs> so, anyway. But the coin stays. Yeah, but the coin stays. That's true. So there there is there is that. So I don't... I don't see in my... Check. In my um, You're probably going to need thing. I don't look at your old character sheet before the rework. Oh, okay. Yeah, so just look. You kept the coins, just transfer over your inventory from there. Okay, because I have a corruption one already. Yeah, because you lost a, a, toy, a coin toss before. And then you never okay. wanted to toss another coin. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that's why I forgot they were there. <laughs> yeah, but these are uh, they, from what Baelish knows, they've been calling to her every once in a while. Whenever odd things happen, they, they call to her. So, now... Oh, that's right. Black bag, 50 deep red black coins. Yes. But I only have 49 right now. Right. Yes, that is correct. Okay, so I need to correct that. Thank you. <laughs> yup, yup. Now, uh, it is about uh, 1 in the morning now. It's been a while. Uh, everyone's kind of fizzling out and leaving. What are you guys uh, doing? Except for Tuck, he's passed out on the ground, and Blue kind of and, I, and up we next can't to him. move him. <laughs> no, you can't. Not while he's wearing this armor, you cannot move him. So I, I and actually kind of get up on Tugnut's shoulders, like his his shoulder piece, and I, I just start meditating. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. Uh, Tough Nut, what are you doing? Uh. Keep, keep in mind, your ship is still at dock here. Um. Well, technically, Baelish was the one that agreed to do the... The job, yeah. The job. Nobody really invited me to go with them. <laughs> yeah, that's really up to you. This is all... This is all... You, you're a free spirit. You you don't even... You don't even really know what the heck an all... Well, you remember. You were there during the first All Flame. But you don't know mm -hmm. what they're doing here. Uh, currently in this land. Uh, well, I remember Bunny saying something about when I asked about my scimitars... And uh, Riri said that she could uh, she could do something with them. So I'm gonna go ask Riri if she what she thinks she can do for my scimitars. Okay, uh, Riri, what are you gonna do? Are you asking? Sorry, what was that? Are you asking? Are you yeah, done? I am asking. I am going up to Riri okay. and saying, so uh, that guy was kind of a kind of a douche. 
I don't think I really liked him, but um, do you think you can do anything with these? Oh, I, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll give it my best shot. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Riri, you see Riri run up into a room in the tavern, just away. Like, oh, dear. Bouncing on her little bunny feet. <laughs> bung, 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 bung. Now, Riri, uh, you take these scimitars, and this is the first time you've ever had a good look at them. They are like, they're not rusty, but they are stained with like orange black stuff all over them. And they smell of iron, like deep iron. And they kind of give you a sickly feeling as you look at them. Okay. Um, I think I would like to try and do a... Because uh, I was going to enchant them. So I'm, I'm going to try and do an enchantment that will help with her blood dancing. Okay. Uh, do you have the any abilities that can do that? I just have, I have the enchant ability. Okay. So I'll say uh, roll a d20 with a wisdom check. W like, so the wisdom check is separate plus? The wisdom plus the d20. Like, just say D20. Oh, okay. Check. Okay. Yep. Uh, 14. 14. Uh, you are not really able to do anything, uh, especially trying to invoke blood magic. It is not something you know anything about. Because you're, 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 like, familiar with the main schools of magic. Blood man, blood man, answer, blood, blood magic is very, like, occult and unholy. It's very different to you. You would need time to study her abilities before you could try this again. Oh, uh, could I, like, try using that, um, because I have some of the dragon blood. Mm-hmm. Is there, could I try to, um, like, imbue this, that them with, um, some kind of... I completely just lost my train of thought. Unfortunately, not at this time. If you had, if you had done that first check with the the dragon's blood, maybe, but not right now. Oh, I think we lost her. Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, I do think that will be a good time for a break while I go help her out. So I'm just gonna we're gonna take like a five to ten minute break, everybody, and then we'll move on to the next bit. Does that sound good? You guys Bree, are, how you yeah. doing? <laughs> yeah, because I know I know you need a slight break here too, Bree. So we'll be back in about let's say five ish minutes, and I'll see you guys there. Okay. Uh Titus, you there?
And we're back. Oh, and uh, I'm goofing again with these, but I can move over there. Rainy had to shut off her uh, camera due to issues. Can you hear me, honey? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, now, uh, it's basically the next morning. Tough night, you've woken up from an eight-hour sleep. Uh, and you see when next to you in your same room a little bunny just having two swords on either side of her and she's kind of like going eh, like she can't really she's confused didn't really understand the concept behind your two scimitars at all unfortunately Riri you okay? Mm-hmm. I, I was, it's, you, I'll get it eventually <laughs> it's okay I appreciate you trying anyway so I take back the scimitars. All right, take your scimitars back, and as you as you walk down stairs, uh, you see uh, Tugnut still passed out on the ground with a meditating Baelish on top of his head, <laughs> and a little bluke curled up on his chest, just sleeping. And like no one's in the bar except for all of, like the passed out people from Baelish's um, sleeping potion still. I tap Baelish on the shoulder. Yeah. Baelish? Yes? <laughs> so, uh, how long is this uh, sleeping potion going to last there, Baelish? Hey, Riri, can you, uh... <laughs> Riri comes, waddles herself downstairs. Just in her bunny self. What's up? Can you, uh, do something about this? <laughs> and you, you see, <sighs> you see Tugnut just passed out with... With Bluke on his shoulder, or on his chest, there. I I'm gonna walk over to the um to the tankards at the bar and fill one up with beer. Okay. And then I'm just going to pour it on um on Tugnut's head. Okay. As you pour it, Tugnut wakes up in his old self. Oh. <laughs> Brother. Oh. Brother. Well, something hit me in the back of the head. That was dumb. Yeah, fancy that. Yeah, well, it didn't feel very fancy. Alright. How, uh, how you feeling there, buddy? I'm okay. I'm just groggy. I feel I'm like I... Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, why is everyone passed out here? It's so empty. This was a really good party last night. Yeah, it's very unlike me to pass out during a party. All right, let's go. Uh, so the only people that are in there are the ones passed out, right? Yeah, everyone. It's you guys and everyone who you knocked out last night. I picked their pockets before leaving. All right, do an investigation check of some kind. <laughs> Uh, would it be sleight of hand? Uh, or? Any, any, anything and describe to me why it makes sense that you're doing it. I mean, sleight of hand, I think, makes the most sense because I'm okay. kind of quickly, before we're leaving, literally grabbing everything I can from their pockets. Okay. Uh, So it would be 19. 19. All right, you find uh, six bracelets of gold, a about 30 silver pieces, and a letter uh, that looks like it's been crumpled up in somebody's back pocket. Uh, walking out of the, the tavern, I read the letter. The letter says, Dear Sean, no. <laughs> Nothing no else on that, it. Nothing else. No on wonder it. that guy was drinking last night. Yeah, it was like the, the deer Sean is very pretty, and no was like just scratched on it. I just kind of go. <laughs> <laughs> and as you, as you walk out, you throw it. You you go. You hear. Oh my God! It's Baelish. And as you turn, you see oh. this little gnome with a lute going. 
<laughs> Hello, oh, it is me again. Da -na 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 -na. And he starts dancing around you. He's like, it's been so long, my love. And he grabs your hand and he starts going, mwah, 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 all in your hand. It's not as charming as it was before you met Dynamo, but it's still pretty darn cute. I kind of go, oh, thank you. It's good to see you, too. He's like, yes, and we can now continue our courtship. And he just wraps his little gnome arms around your leg. Because, you know, he's tiny AF. So he's just like, hey. I, I just kind of keep walking with this gnome on my leg. Dear, why are you not stopping? It's been months. And he just, like, swings you around with his little like dance like no attitude and he starts playing you a very beautiful love song do a constitution check oh dear uh, sixteen it's like it's the first time you ever heard it it's so lovely you understood why you had these feelings for this gnome at that one <laughs> juncture in your life and now you're torn between the ice-cold touch of Dynamo and the songs of beauty from this gnome. I hey, can't uh, Baelish? <laughs> Who is this? Hey, you know him! He's your bard me. that's been on your ship! Your yeah, ship is docked! This is your gnome! <laughs> oh. You know this guy! <laughs> Who is this? Uh, you have to remind me. Oh, because... So, on your ship, there was Grumpy, who is your... Yes. And then there was also this gnome... Who is just on the ship? Who is playing you guys sea shanties? Oh no! Yeah, dude, what are you doing off the ship? It's like who told you you could even come? I sensed my love, my true love would be in the tavern, and I was more than right. Bling. And he just keeps trying to charm Baelish even more with more strums. Did you get shore leave? N no, no first mate, and he stands up straight. Back on the ship, buddy. Yes, ma'am! He's like, I will see you soon. And he kind of bounces and trots away. That reminds me of... I need to get a flute. <laughs> Baelish? Oh, wait, I have a flute. You owe me, Baelish. I Thank you. pull it out and I start <laughs> playing. <laughs> Alright, do a performance check. <laughs> oh, God! Ten. Ten. All right, one moment. Hold on. One second, guys. Uh, do we need to do constitution check? No, I got this. <laughs> one sec. I, I've been wanting to do this on uh, recorder because you guys have no idea what's about to happen. So. Oh, God. One second here. I think we all have ideas no. about what it is. No, you don't. Happen. So, um, Tugnut pulls out this flute, and as he starts playing it, sorry, I have to mute my music on my end here. Um, as he starts playing the flute, all you guys are instantly charmed by whatever the heck, uh, this is. Oh, God! No. And you start hearing... Please stop. No! This is terrible. And at, at the peak, as he looks into the flute, you guys hear. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is he playing through his nose? <laughs> I love shit flute. I love shit flute. <laughs> And you guys can't believe this is what's coming out of Tugnut's little flute he has. It's quite surprising. And, and like, it, it's blowing all of your guys' Some of you I haven't seen? Hold on, it's better right here. It's the best part. All right. Anyway, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so he, you heard Tugnut play that beautiful, beautiful song um, for for a moment there, and it, it just it just enchanted all of you to no end. 
that including the dog. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the po- like Cer- Cerberus. Rolling. Cerberus is kind of having a seizure. Bluke is trying to cover his ears. <laughs> <laughs> like you see everyone on the ship that you guys were walking by, just like staring over, going, "What the hell?" <laughs> and Tugna, what do you do? Uh, I put away the flute. It's like, oh, you're welcome, everyone. <laughs> Thank oh, you. Thank you. Did I give him any stat boost by any chance? Nope. Damn. <laughs> no. Just no start stat. Clapping. I feel. I feel like I need to get a better flute somewhere. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you guys didn't know I could do that, did you? <laughs> I, could, I could hurt you people from where I'm at. It's great. <laughs> so yeah. I'm okay with. Cool, I'm glad, I'm glad. It's uh, the Hydrobot, if you guys ever want to use that. <laughs> There's a specific... Uh, you should... I have a request for if I roll a critical one on it. Uh, send it to me. Uh, I'll send it to you. Alright, cool. No, oh, God. <laughs> is it over? Uh, Baelish, is it over? So... It's never over. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> so, now... T- Riri, are we safe? <laughs> no. <laughs> so tough nut you have, never you have a, a, a thing right now that you have to do so you're still kind of technically on shore leave from your ship because you're the first officer and you can make that choice mm-hmm. you you kind of miss these guys but you also have a duty to your ship what do you do hey tough nut if you come with us on this job you know I'll make sure you get part of that 20,000 gold yeah, but what about my ship? Well, we can just carry the ship on land. It's that easy. Well, you know, I I, I have some repairs that need to that need to take place. I was going to wait until our next port, but I guess I could uh, pull it up on land and do the or pull it up in uh, in the docks and do some repairs. So how, how how much of that uh, how much of that reward am I gonna get there, Baelish? Uh, even split between all of us. She no. says that, uh, but never trust her. You see how she steals the money from everyone. <laughs> I haven't seen a penny from her yet. That's not <laughs> true. You know it. When have you when have you given me any money? Our last job, I gave you all money. Uh, I thought someone else transported the money in our pocket. Nope. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna somebody to transport your money. I can do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna need something up front to uh, get the repairs started on my ship. Is that doable for anybody? How I, much do you need? I pull out two platinum and hold it out. That'll cover it. I give her two platinum. Okay. So I go back to my ship, and uh, I give the orders to uh, pull up into into port okay. or into not not really dry dock. I don't want to dry dock, but I uh, give the platinum to my. I don't know who's the next. Who's the next? Under you. Under me. <laughs> uh, that'd be the second officer. That's actually Grumpy. Oh, okay. He's right there so in your background. Two- <laughs> way, if you want to, <laughs> if you want to tell him, I give the two platinum to Grumpy, All right, and cool. uh, I tell him to arrange for the repairs to be uh, done, and that I will be back in three weeks. Three weeks. That's how long it takes to get to one one of these places. So if you okay. say three weeks, I'll be back in a month. Okay. And what's Grumpy say? <laughs> hey. Uh. I'm uh, you're my you're my you're my next under me under the on the ship and I'm giving you two platinum to go get the ship fixed. Are you good with that? Sure. Okay, he's Grump- going to go get the ship Grumpy fixed. Grumpy says sure. All right, cool. Lit. Grumpy says sure. Grumpy says sure. Awesome. So <laughs> Grumpy is going to go ahead and do that. And uh, let's see here. All right. So you guys are basically able to uh, get your ship ready. He's he starts ordering staff around and also orders the bard to the bottom of the ship. And as 
Tough Nut gets off, you guys are starting to realize that this may not be as easy as you thought. And we're going to wrap up here and we're, we'll bring it up next week and start gathering supplies to go on your first quest. How's that sound, everyone? Perfect. Sure. Perfect. Cool. Awesome. So, everyone that was... I have a... Yes? What? Nope. Nope. Go for it. Oh. Sorry. That's it. We're done. So I'm just going to close out here and just say, everyone, that was our first session of Drunken Dragons. I hope you all loved it. Furious Money says, GG. Uh, I am going to go ahead and set up a raid target for our stream, slash raid. And we're going to do... Uh, let's see here. And I'm going to ask all of your guys' opinions on this one. Because I know some of you don't know, but some of you do know. And then, like, once I once I say it, it'll all be all be okay. How you guys feel about a dude named Von Buttpants? <laughs> I hate Von Buttpants. All the homies hate Von P Buttpants. I love Von Buttpants. How dare you? <laughs> Von Butt... Where, where's Von Buttpants? I, I'm going to go raid Von Buttpants. He's streaming Valheim right now. Is, is Lady Von Buttpants? Betty, Available? Betty Von Butt Pants. Uh, well, we'll yeah, find out. Pants. We'll find out, guys. So we're gonna be raiding Von Von Butt Pants. Everyone in chat, stick around, join the raid, and we'll see you guys all uh, next week. Everyone, say bye. 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 Uh, where's my ending screen? There it is. Good night, everybody. Bye.